And the drill bit will al already be installed for you. What you need to worry about is making sure that your workpiece is clamped to the drill press table using this drill press vise. Please be very careful not to drill into the metal. Some people accidentally drill into the metal. I put some blue tape here as an indication to you where the metal is because once you put your workpiece up here, you really won't be able to see the metal anymore, right? You just need to make sure that wherever you're drilling is in between those pieces of tape this direction, like this. So anywhere in here will be fine for you to drill. So move your workpiece where it's supposed to go. So you're going to lower this down non-spinning to the surface that you need to drill out. And the table here has a clearance hole. You need to make sure that the drill bit is going to clear the clearance hole, that it's not going to um, go into any metal like, like that. Now you do need safety glasses on the drill press, of course. To operate the drill press, you're gonna turn the on button on. You're gonna lower the wheel. Once you've cut all the way through your workpiece, you're going to retract the wheel by hand. Don't let it go, because it will snap back um, violently, and we don't want that to happen. Here we go. So it should be fairly quick for you to come over here and get your whole drill. Now we're gonna go over to the scroll saw where you're gonna put your blade through your workpiece like this with the teeth facing downward. And I'm gonna teach you how to make a relief cut. Okay, so here we are at a scroll saw. Got our scroll saw blade. Again, take out the table insert. Make sure that your pressure foot is in the middle of this space so that it won't get in your way. If it's too far to the top, then you'll have trouble putting the blade in. We're gonna hook the bottom in first. Always better to do that. Pull up, put some pressure up on the blade. This can be a little bit tricky. You're gonna push this down. You gotta push this down, but with your hand, right? And then clip it in the top little forked area, okay? Now, once that's in place, please remember to put the tension adjustment rod down. If you feel like, um, you know, you're having trouble putting the tension adjustment rod down or it might be too tight or too loose, just ask me for help. The blade should sound like this. When you flick it, that's a good indication that there's enough tension on the blade. Remember to put your table insert back and remember to wear your safety glasses, okay? So, pressure foot needs to drop into place and then you tighten it. You see, you see I'm just moving that um, pressure foot knob about this much, like a quarter of a turn. I'm gonna show you how to do something that's called a relief cut. Now, the blade of the scroll saw will not cut a 90 degree corner like perfectly crisp because the blade has a little bit of depth to it this direction. It's not that much, but it's enough that you, you'll have to have a little bit of a radius in that turn. But what we want is a corner that is perfectly 90 degree crisp, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to, you're gonna cut up to one line, then back up, and then cut back around to that same point from another direction. That's called a relief cut. I'm gonna demonstrate it, we'll talk about it. Okay, so I've cut up to my first line. I cut down this line over here, and I cut up to this line, I've stopped. You don't wanna go past that, you don't wanna to try to turn at this point. It's okay to stop the saw, and it's okay to back up like this. You, you can do that. You, you know, you only wanna cut the wood that you wanna cut. Don't overcut because you can't ever go back and, and uncut. <laughs> An uncutter, that's something uh, somebody should invent, all right? Now we're gonna cut to the same point from another direction. I'm gonna kind of like curve around this way. This is called a relief cut. That will be on a quiz or something. See, I can turn a little bit, just not that sharp. And once I get here, I'm gonna make my turn all the way, and then at the very last moment of that turn, I'm cutting perfectly straight. Stop the saw completely, take out your off cut, and throw it in the gray scrap bin, which is here. All right, so just put that guy in there. Now, you wanna make sure that you cut off enough from this other side so that you can fit the flat of the blade right in that spot, okay? So I did, I, I did a pretty good job on that one, actually. That blade fits really nicely. Okay, we're gonna go on to the next relief cut. 
The important thing is do not overcut. Sometimes um, what will happen, and just happened to me, um, you'll be pushing that piece along and it will stop pushing and you want to go a little bit further. That's because the corner of your piece of wood is getting caught in the little lip between the table and the table insert. If that happens, just relieve the pressure foot a little bit, just unscrew it just slightly and you'll be able to just kind of like hop up over that table uh, insert lip right there. Okay, now I'm gonna say it again, a relief cut is when you cut to the same place from another direction. And please throw those scraps of wood into the gray scrap bin. Keep our shop clean. So once you're done making your cut, you can go ahead and relieve the pressure off the saw on that tension adjustment rod. Wiggle your blade out of there. Return the blade to me. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out piece number three and then we're gonna go ahead and mark piece number two. When you do have a piece of wood pop out and get, get released, uh, go ahead and stop the saw to, to clear it out, put it in the scrap bin. That was the scrap bin, not the floor, I just threw it in. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and cut that back piece out. Um, do you have to use the pressure foot? Sometimes people ask. Well, let's see what happens if you don't. So at this point, I'm just carrying on with my relief cutting scheme, um, but I'm not using my pressure foot for the moment to demonstrate what will happen. There's long grain that I'm cutting down here, so um, there's not really any jumping around because the blade is kind of cutting with the natural grain of the wood. If you were to cut across the grain of the wood, as I kind of start to do right here, um, you might get a little bit more hopping going on. So if the pressure foot is getting in your way, it's okay to not use it for a moment. You just have to be careful to hold that piece of wood tight against the table. See, I'm going very slowly at the end because I don't want to the blade to jump past the line where I want my cut to be. So go ahead and go really slowly there at the end. Sometimes your little scraps will fall through the table. Uh, that's fine, just let them fall. It's not gonna mess up the machine. That's what it's made for. Okay, so now we can check the fitment of piece number three. And you see we have a nice snug fit there. See how the wood holds together, right? This piece number three is kind of holding piece number one inside that groove. That's exactly what we want. Okay, now we can take piece number three with this notch right here. See that amount of wood right here that's left over. That's what we need to mark piece number two. So let's go back to the table. 